In this video, we're going to demonstrate how the UX component deals with uh, data in a disconnected scenario. So the basic idea is that when you're disconnected, you cannot uh, submit any edits to the server. So all of the edits have to be um, kept locally. And then um, when you do have a connection, then you can synchronize the server database with the local changes that were made while you were disconnected. So you can see that we have a list control here that has some data. This data is coming from a uh, SQL Server database and over here in SQL Server Management Studio I'm looking at the uh, same uh, database that was used to originally populate uh, the data in the UX component. So let's start out with something really simple. Let's go here to uh, Jennifer Harris and change that uh, to Alan. Harris and go ahead now and hit save. So uh, what we have showing up over here is just debug information to help us understand what's going on. So this little um, icon over here indicates that this record now uh, is dirty but that it has not yet been synchronized with the server. So what this is showing over here is the current data that this list control has in it and then also the original data that it had before we made the edit. So there's Alan Harris right now and you can see there's Jennifer Harris which is the original data. And if we go back to the SQL Server database and look at the data in the database, we'll go ahead here and do a refresh, we can see that it still says Jennifer Harris. So now um, let's assume that we finally got our connection back and we now press the synchronize button. So I'm going to go ahead now and press uh, synchronize and uh, what you'll see happening is that um, the uh, icon here goes away. The um, debug, this is my de debug information. This wouldn't normally be here, but I've turned debug on. Shows me what the SQL command was that got executed on the server. So you can see we've uh, done an update and we've changed um, the record to um, Alan from Jennifer and if we go to our SQL database here and do a refresh we can see that the uh, data got updated. So let's go ahead and do something just a little bit more complicated. We'll do um, uh, several rows of data. So we'll go back to Alan here and change that to Bernard and then click on say Sarah Perkins and change that to Jenny Perkins. Now if I try to click on another row now before saving my local edits, you can see that I get warned that I have to do that. I have to first uh, save my local edits or undo them. So if I wanted I could undo my changes but I'm going to go ahead there and hit save. So now I've got two records on the client that have not yet been committed to the server and then let's go here and actually add a new record. So I'll go here and I'll just type in say uh, uh, Dick Smith uh, Alpha Boston MA and then save that. So now you can see my new record shows up in uh, with a little blue icon over here. So at this point now I've got uh, th uh, three edits on the client that have not yet been synchronized with the server. So let's go ahead now and hit synchronize. So um, this is now going to go and commit all the data to the server. You can see I've got a debug one in one of my event handlers in the before insert event handler which I'm going to just ignore so I'll just go ahead now and uh, hit run. So now at this point now we basically you can see how we've done an update on the first row, another update on the second row and then an insert on that last row over here and uh, if we go now to our server and do a refresh over here. We can see there's Bernard, there's Jenny, and then if we scroll to the very end here, we can see there's that new record that got added. So you can see how while we were disconnected, we did data entry against uh, two, uh, two records, and then we added a new record, and then at the time when we synchronized it, all that information got uh, pushed to the server. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video where we'll discuss um, write conflicts and uh, two-way synchronization which means synchronizing changes that were made on the server back to the client. So let's continue now with our demonstration of how the UX deals with disconnected data and let's deal with a more uh, uh, complex scenario. So we'll, let's quickly go back to design mode here and I want to just point out that this first name field has a server-side validation rule that says that the first name can't be Frank. Now 
I realize that that's a somewhat uh, arbitrary and silly rule, but it does demonstrate a, uh, a point. So now let's go over to uh, Working Preview and start making some edits. So I'm going to go here and change that to uh, Becky2, and then let's go here and change this uh, next row here to, say, uh, Nick2, and then change that one to, say, Nancy2. So now we've basically gone ahead here and we've made edits to the first three rows uh, in uh, the list over here. And if we look at the end of the list, the last record here is uh, James Mahoney right now. So now I'm going to go back um, to the server and start making changes over there. So the changes that I'm making now on the server are simulating some other user uh, making edits uh, at the same time. So we'll go now back to the server and uh, uh, here we go, and let's just uh, refresh the data. So here are the first, uh, the, here's the data in the server. So first of all, let's go to say rows um, uh, uh, 8, 9, and 10 and make some edits over here. So I'll go here and type in Jennifer, all in capital, so it'll be obvious what the change is that I've made. Uh, and then there's uh, Thomas, and now let's go here and type in Brian. So now these three edits uh, were made by uh, somebody else. They're, these are going to be non-conflicting edits because the user on the mobile device didn't modify rows 8, 9, or 10. Uh, he did modify rows um, 1, 2, and 3. So let's go back now to uh, uh, this row over here and change that to uh, Nancy. So. Uh, some other user now has gone ahead and changed it to Nancy, whereas the um, original, the, on the mobile device, the user has changed this to Becky2. So let's go ahead now. And, oh, let's also do one final thing here. Let's go to the very end here and um, uh, add, um, add a new row. So we'll go here and just type in, say, uh, uh, Henry. Uh, Friedman, and then let's go to this row, James Mahoney, and delete that row. So we've gone ahead here and done an insert and also a uh, delete. So I'll go back now to our list and hit the synchronize button. And there you can see uh, what, what we've got here is um, our um, right conflict over here. This is telling us that we have a right conflict. Uh, we didn't actually make any uh, record th that had a first name of uh, Fred, so we don't see our server-side validation error. So we'll go ahead and do that a little bit later. And if you look here at the end, there's the uh, new record that was added, uh, Henry Friedman, but record number 60 got deleted, so that record is now gone. And let's go back and look at this record here. So this is telling us that there's a right conflict. So if we click on the... Uh, message here tells us that our value is Becky2 but that the uh, user on the mob on the the other user who edited the SQL database he went ahead and he changed um, that row to Nancy so we've got a choice now we can either basically accept their value which is Nancy which and if we do that then this record here will just go clean or we can say no use my value which is Becky too so I'm going to go ahead now and say use my value which means that the record now is still dirty because I haven't pushed that back to the server and now if I hit synchronize the change works and if I go back to the server now and take a look at that row I can see that that now in fact does say uh, Becky too and furthermore that those rows that I edited the non-conflicting edits have now been reflected over here on the client side you can see that these n rows now all show uh, the capital values so let's just quickly go back here to say this record now and try and change it to say Frank go ahead there and hit save edit and then synchronize and you can see now there's our server side error shown over here so what we've shown is uh, a fairly complex synchronization process going on here in the UX component